Good morning, uh, Mr. Goodman. Good morning. How are you today? Fine. Okay, we are here in Washington, D.C., and uh, we are at the office uh, of Voice America. Right. Uh, the first question we like to ask is, uh, what is the vision and mission of Voice of America? Uh, the Voice of America is, let me, let me give a little background. The, the Voice of America is uh, a U.S. government-funded uh, international broadcaster. Uh, we broadcast to, uh, it, we, we broadcast in 42 languages, uh, including Indonesian. Uh, the Voice of America has been in existence since 1942, uh, and the Indonesian service is one of the first services, so we also started in 1942. Uh, the original purpose of the Voice of America, the reason it was established, was to uh, uh, respond to uh, Nazi propaganda in Europe. Uh, uh, and the idea was that uh, the people of Europe uh, needed to have uh, actual, truthful uh, information. Uh, and so on the very first broadcast, uh, the uh, announcers started off by saying, the news may be good or the news may be bad, but we will tell you the truth, uh, as opposed to what people were getting from uh, Nazi Germany. And that was in German, of course. German. That w and, and it was in German, that's correct. Um, since then, of course, the world has changed. Uh, uh, the Voice of America played an uh, important role during the Cold War, uh, breaking down the Iron Curtain. Uh, and uh, these days, uh, the, 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 there are uh, challenges all around the world to freedom of the press, freedom of speech, and democracy. Uh, and so, <clears throat> the larger mission of the Voice of America and the Broadcasting Board of Governors that is uh, the agent is the government agency that manages the Voice of America. Mr. Goodman, can you tell me more about your background? Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm the chief of the Indonesian service. Uh, I've been at Voice of America since 2000. Uh, before that, I worked uh, for the Institute of International Education, uh, 10 years in Indonesia from 1983 to 1993. And uh, uh, in Indonesia, I was responsible for managing some scholarship and training programs, uh, as well as all the testing that students need to study in the United States. So the TOEFL exam, the GRE, and the GMAT, uh, and that's for a Fulbright scholarship. Well, the, 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 the Institute of International Education is responsible for managing the Fulbright program uh, in the United States. Uh, in Indonesia, there's the AMINEF, which is the American Indonesian Education Foundation. Uh, so they handle the Indonesian side uh, of, uh, of the Fulbright program and, and the Humphrey program. And they're still there. They're still there, and and IIE is still there. Uh, it's now known as the Indone Indonesian International Education Foundation, IIEF. And uh, you graduated from Stanford. Yeah, I uh, prior to that, um, I, I got a PhD in international development education from Stanford University, uh, and. Uh, uh, I was in the Peace Corps and the Teacher Corps. Uh, I spent two years in Malaysia in the Peace Corps as the Panasi Hat Bahasa Inggris Pahang Barat. Uh, and um, before that, I got a master's degree at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and a bachelor's degree at Stanford. Uh, so uh, I was also at the East West Center for about a year. Uh, writing up my dissertation. So uh, I have lots of education. <laughs> many years. So many years of education. About uh, Voice America, a lot of Indonesians feel that 
it is a propaganda of the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate more? Well, uh, let me say very clearly, the Voice of America is not a propaganda organization. Uh, uh, our job is not to persuade people to any particular point of view. Um, uh, and I think that's the classic definition of propaganda, is to use information, to manipulate information, uh, to uh, persuade people or to mis, 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 mislead people uh, to whatever the uh, propagandist is trying to achieve. Uh, the Voice of America is a journalistic organization. And, and like any good journalistic organization, uh, our, we, we strive for uh, objectivity, for accuracy, for balance. Uh, our job is to, uh, uh, to, to uh, provide comprehensive news and information. Uh, and again, whether it's good news or bad news, uh, we will report it. Uh, so, e even if the uh, bad news it has to do uh, about the U.S. government, absolutely. Itself. So, uh, when Abu Ghraib uh, occurred in Iraq um, a, a few years ago, that was a story that was very damaging to the United States. Uh, but we reported it just as all, all of the news media uh, re reported it. One of the most important elements for any journalistic organizations is credibility. Uh, and if you only report good news, if you only report news that is uh, favorable to a, a particular country or a particular party or whatever, uh, you will lose your credibility and without your credibility you have nothing. Um, how, how, however, people think that the Voice of America is funded by the U.S. government. Does it, um, there's a certain criteria that the U.S. government wants, which is to promote the United States. Well, uh, Congress provides the funding, that's true. Uh, but we have editorial independence, so no, no element of the U.S. government, not the White House, not Congress, not the Pentagon, not the State Department, uh, tells us what we can and cannot uh, report. Uh, and uh, we guard that uh, journalistic independence uh, very jealously so that uh, any challenge to it is met with a great deal of resistance on our part. We have this, this board of, broad, the BBG, uh, Broadcasting Board of Governors, uh, acts as a firewall uh, between us and the rest of the government uh, so that we are protected uh, from any editorial interference. And the, and the rest of the government understands that. Um, they do not, uh, most of the time, they do not try to uh, influence us uh, because they know that uh, it's not going to succeed. Um, so but there, there are also certain um, uh, basic uh, requirement or criteria. Uh, my understanding, uh, forgive me, uh, is that the certain word that you cannot use, it has to be formal. Uh, or that's, you know, so if I say Gua, which is mm -hmm. I in, in, uh, Way, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, in slang language, yeah. uh, that's not allowed by Voice, Voice America. Is that correct? Uh, no, there's no rule. Like oh, there's that. no rule. So. No, but w uh, we, we uh, it depends on who our audience is. Uh, partly because not everybody all across Indonesia uses GUI. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we, you know, we tr 
we we do try to use standard Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, uh, or formal formal Indonesian. Well, uh, let me put it. Let me not formal, but proper. All right. Prop, there we go, uh, proper. Mm -hmm. uh, because we also are trying to be communicative. Uh, so we, we, we are also conscious of trying to use language that everybody uses every day, uh, uh, not to be too intellectual or too, uh, too, too formal. So basically, um, uh, formal not too f uh, or not too formal, it's up to the reporters to yes, and it uh, depends express. On it depends on on what we're, uh, what kind of programming it is. Um, in other words, we do lots of news, but we also uh, have programming for youth and for women and for business people and for uh, 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 different classes of people in Indonesia. Uh, and so we, depending on who the audience is. Uh, we try to use the language that they use. We even do programming. Uh, we we have a, a TV program f that's for East Java uh, that appears on JTV out of Surabaya, uh, and we use Javanese uh, in that program. Uh, so there's there is no prohibition or 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 policy that says you know you can only use this kind of language that doesn't mean that uh, pretty much is uh, the freedom is given to all the reporters or uh, there are certain policy that you have uh, the report has to follow as far as uh, giving news well we have editors uh, and uh, I don't normally make these decisions there, there are very few occasions where I step into that conversation uh, but our editors decide uh, for whatever program it is they're editing uh, whether the language is appropriate uh, and understandable. Um, and uh, so, so uh, I, I guess you could say yes, it really is up to the producer uh, in, in choosing the language they use. I mean, uh, of course, but the we, policy don't, we don't Mary use any... Not, not we, to we, restrict. Pretty no, much, there's yeah. no, there's no overarching policy. Uh, I mean, like any organization, we don't allow profanity, uh, and uh, uh, we try to avoid using uh, slang that is only used in Jakarta, uh, because we know people all across the, the country may not understand it. Um, but aside from that. Uh, there are, I think, there are very few rules about language. How many people work for Voice America in, of Indonesia? Uh, right now, we have 38 full-time staff in Washington. Uh, we have about 10 contractors as well, uh, and then uh, we have four full-time staff in Jakarta, and we have uh, 10 stringers across Indonesia. Uh, so that's that's the Indonesian service. Uh, the Voice of America uh, has language bureaus uh, or, or all across the world, and and correspondents all around the world uh, that support not just Indonesian but support the larger organization. Uh, so uh, altogether, there are probably seven hundred staff at the Voice of America. Uh, and then there are another uh, thou a thousand people, so a total of 1,700 people, who are uh, involved in the technical support for the Voice of America. So the Voice of America is content, uh, and and we are the we, we produce uh, the the programming that people see, but behind that you have. The studio technicians and the satellite technicians and the shortwave broadcasting uh, uh, towers all around the world. Uh, You're talking about radio tower, or yeah, 
yeah, I mean, we still use for some countries short waves. Uh, in other countries, uh, we use radio to uh, broadcast ac across borders. Uh, but in Indonesia? Well, uh, <coughs> in Indonesia, we're very fortunate because uh, we can work with affiliates. Uh, so virtually all of our content, whether it's television or radio, is uh, by way of local uh, radio and TV stations. So we're working now with over 400 radio stations, uh, <coughs> and we're working with uh, eight of the 11 national television stations uh, and uh, over 30 uh, local and regional television stations. And uh, is there any charge for uh, taking some of the news from Voice of America? Is there any a charge, or is charge? there any fee, oh. or, uh, uh, or it is a public domain? No, we we provide uh, all of our content for f free. There's no charge, uh, and by the same token, the affiliate stations don't charge us. Uh, so. Uh, there's an understanding with our affiliates that this is of mutual benefit. Uh, and uh, so we're, we're, and we have, we have a very good relationship with our affiliates. Uh, we try to have annual conferences with them. Uh, in, in Indonesia? In Indonesia. Uh, the last one was last uh, October uh, in Bandung. And uh, um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a very good relationship. Um, but again, we're very fortunate because Indonesia has uh, a relatively free press uh, and uh, a very competitive media market, uh, and uh, it allows uh, uh, it allows the local stations to carry uh, content from other broadcasters. Mr. Goodman, what is the challenge uh, of VOA in Indonesia? As an example, for instance, about the incident of GKI Yasmin and also the situation with Ahmadiyya. Well, w when things like this happen in Indonesia, uh, we cover them as news events, of course. Uh, but what we also try to do is find uh, comparable situations in the United States uh, so that uh, we, we provide um, additional perspective on whatever the situation is. Um, so in the case of uh, the Ahmadiyya or G G GKI, uh, um, Yasmin, uh, uh, in situations like that, what we would do is look uh, for comparable things in the United States. In other words, uh, we would look for the Ahmadiyya community in, uh, in the U.S. and uh, ex examine their relationship with Sunnis uh, or Shiites basically with the other Muslim communities in the United States to see how they uh, live together uh, and how they work out their differences. Uh, <clears throat> and then that provides an alternate uh, uh, story uh, or provides an alternate uh, Role model example. It provi it basically, it provides an alternate option for people uh, in interpreting the events that are happening in Indonesia. But there's also uh, things that happen, uh, religious conflict in the U.S. Mm -hmm. As an example, there are mosques that has been attacked here in the U.S. Is that also going to be covered? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we cover those stories. And, but what's important, uh, we think, is that uh, we, we don't... 
some some time ago there was a, a Christian minister in the South who w was planning to burn uh, the Quran. Uh, it was a very famous incident in the United States. That's in Florida. Right? Uh, that's right. And uh, we covered that story uh, quite extensively uh, because what we sh what we wanted to show was not only were there are some people who thought this was a good thing to do. Uh, what we also wanted to show was how the society uh, handled the this incident, because it's a it, it was an issue of free speech, uh, but it was also an issue of uh, freedom of religion. It was an issue of uh, 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 civility. Okay. So what we what we what we showed was how the community, how the United States, uh, from the president on down, responded to uh, this threat to to burn Qurans, um, and uh, so I think it you know it was it was a very important learning experience, not just for the United States but for the rest of the world and understanding how the United States copes with these situations. Bad things happen in the United States. There's no question about it. Uh, uh, but what, uh, what we think is that by providing uh, accurate, fair, balanced uh, news and information, what we're, do what, what, we're, what we're doing is we're providing a complete picture of uh, these uh, bad incidents, bad situations. I mean, f just recently we had the situation in Ferguson, uh, Missouri, uh, where um, a, a, a police a policeman shot uh, an African American, uh, and uh, you know there were weeks of protests, uh, and uh, so we followed that story because we think it's very important and very instructive uh, to show how uh, inv we had investigations uh, and you know what the consequences were for the police and the changes that are ha still happening in Ferguson to improve the situation uh, and to uh, bring the communities back together again after this very divisive event. Uh, so. But who, who actually determined what news to be covered uh, in, uh, at What's America? Uh, well, it's, we have a central newsroom uh, which gathers news stories from all over the world, uh, both through our own correspondence and our bureaus, uh, but also uh, we have access to all of the major wires uh, that news organizations use around the world. Uh, uh, the, the newsroom, from, from our newsroom, we have a, a news wire uh, that goes out to all of the language services. Uh, and they, uh, uh, they, they provide a list of what they think are the top ten stories. Our editors in the Indonesian service uh, look at that list uh, and they use it as guidance but we choose which stories we think are the most important and we is and appropriate for Indonesia and when you say we you're talking about the editor At, it, within the Indonesian service so the editor basically. yes yes whoever's whoever's uh, putting together uh, the the daily shows so the editors change uh, from day to day but we, we also heard that the uh, uh, the, uh, the radio department uh, will be closing down. Mm -hmm. is, is that correct? There's a proposal. The, when, when the president sends his budget to Congress every year, uh, you know, the, part of the budget proposal is the funding for the Voice of America. In this year's budget proposal, uh, the White House uh, sp specified a 
uh, reduction to the Indonesian service that would that would in effect eliminate radio and take away 13 full-time positions. Um, right now that proposal is sitting in Congress um, but we have also heard that the Senate has its own proposals and the House has its own proposals uh, and of course now we have a Democratic president and a Republican Congress uh, so, uh, you know, we don't know how it will all end. Um, uh, so, uh, basically, uh, does the Congress and the President, when they send the proposal, it also determine how much uh, go to TV and how much go to radio? Or it's just a matter of, this is the budget, you work with that budget? Uh, actually, in in this situation, there are specific proposals uh, uh, for reductions and and increases. Uh, so, actually, the the budget proposal that went this year called for the elimination of uh, seven well reductions or eliminations to seven different language services at the Voice of America, not just not just the Indonesian service. Uh, and uh, so, yes, Congress does weigh in on some, some of these more granular uh, issues. Uh, and, and, and those seven, what, what is those countries that are friendly to the U.S. or are, are those uh, 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 countries. Uh, yeah, maybe you can uh, kind of elaborate. What are they looking to eliminate seven uh, different languages? Well, I can't yeah. really speak to that. I mean, uh, the, yeah. the uh, no, these are not countries that are necessarily friendly on friendly, friendly or not. They haven't necessarily somehow graduated. Um, I mean, I historically, uh, you know, the, the Voice of America started broadcasting to Europe. Uh, these days, the Voice of America doesn't broadcast to Europe uh, uh, at and all. And re the reason why? Because those countries are, uh, uh, I think perhaps the most important reason is they have a free press, uh, they're democratic, and uh, there's no particular uh, a need for the Voice of America in those places. But Indonesia, isn't that the same situation where <laughs> it's, it's free press, uh, democratic, or actually the largest, well, let's say, there yes, was the a third, second, third, largest third, third largest democracy in the world at this moment. Yes. Uh, so is Indonesia one of the target by Congress? Uh, Indonesia is a strategically important country for the United States. Uh, why? Why is that? Well, it's, there are several reasons. One of which is that it's the third largest democracy in the world. Uh, uh, that it has uh, geographically, it's strategic because you can't get from the Indian Ocean to the Pacific Ocean without passing Indonesian waters unless you go south of Australia and that what we try to demonstrate uh, by doing good journalism uh, is just how important journalism is to democracy. Um, how, how do you see yourself, uh, Voice of America of Indonesia in the future? How do we... In this, uh, where do you think, uh, where do you uh, think, in your opinion, where uh, in this coming years, uh, where Voice America will be, where are going to develop, uh, where, where do you, uh, what's the future, uh, yeah. where are you heading to, that's well, what I'm uh, saying, where, where are you heading? Uh, <coughs> in terms of, you're really asking a question that's above my pay grade. <laughs> um, uh, I think there will always be uh, international broadcasting uh, sponsored by the U.S. government, but I don't, I can't really tell you what form it will take. Um, 
there's a lot of discussion going on right now. Uh, Congress is considering new legislation. Uh, and there are different proposals for uh, U.S. international broadcasting. So the Voice of America currently is, 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 is a government institution. Um, an alternative would be to uh, create uh, a non-governmental organization, uh, still with funding from Congress, uh, but uh, essentially private, uh, which would uh, have some advantages. Uh, Voice of America is, as a government organization, is a civil service organization. So we are uh, bound by uh, civil service regulations um, in terms of hiring and firing and, and so on. Um, we are uh, very dependent on the budget cycle that uh, the U.S. government goes through. Uh, and in the past years, Congress and the White House uh, have had trouble coming up with a budget. Uh, and so there are continuing resolutions uh, that can be Sometimes they could be a couple of weeks, sometimes they can be a couple of months, uh, but it's not, it's a very difficult way to operate a, a broadcasting organization when you, when, when you only get your money one month at a time. Um, I, I thought it's a budget for a year, not. Well, this is, I mean, this isn't just, this isn't just the Voice of America, it's not just U.S. international broadcasting, this is the entire government uh, suffers when uh, Congress and the President can't reach agreement I see what you mean. on the federal budget, right? Um, and uh, in, in, what, for several years, uh, we didn't have a, uh, an, an annual budget. What we had were continuing resolutions. Uh, excuse, excuse me. Um, okay. Um, Finally, uh, I like to speak in Indonesian. Okay, I'm uh, not sure I'm going to be able to answer. Uh, okay, Pak Goodman, uh, pesan terakhir, pes pesanan terakhir untuk Permisa Kabari, boleh uh, memberi pesanan sedikit. Which means, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I understand uh, what you you're saying, but I don't know what what message I would have yeah. for them. Yeah, well, um, uh, if, if not mix Indonesian and English, is fine. Then the, the, the last message to uh, our readers. Well, uh, if you're not already uh, watching VOA or listening to us, if you haven't uh, be befriended us on Facebook, uh, uh, we welcome you to come and uh, uh, see what we have. And uh, what's the uh, website address? Website is uh, www.voaindonesia.com. Uh, on Facebook, we now have 2.3 million Facebook followers. Wow. Uh, also VOA Indonesia. Twitter, we have uh, about 125,000 Twitter followers. Uh, we're also on Instagram and uh, SoundCloud. And, uh, Twitter is under what name? Uh, also VOA Indonesia. Uh, we, on on uh, YouTube, we have uh, over 9,000 videos. Uh, so you can get caught up <laughs> by visiting us on uh, YouTube. Uh, and um, uh, what am I missing? We've got YouTube, I think pretty much Instagram, Pinterest. We're also on Pinterest. Uh, so basically anywhere that you might be going on social media, uh, you should be able to find VOA Indonesia. Um, but uh, uh, we're Join us on Facebook because we're trying to get to three million. Okay. Bisa bicara sedikit bahasa Indonesia. Uh, 
saya senang sekali uh, ada uh, wawancara ini sama sama saya dan uh, uh, untuk uh, berbincang uh, uh, program program VOA di Indonesia uh, dan uh, mudah-mudahan kalau belum uh, dengar atau lihat VOA uh, sekarang uh, uh, pembaca magazine ini uh, mau uh, check us out di Facebook atau di website voaindonesia.com Terima kasih. Okay. Sampai berjumpa. Terima kasih.